right. We should be good to go. Lawrence, welcome to Living Off Rentals. Thanks. Yeah, happy to be here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to have you. Um, I'm super pumped to have you on the podcast because, you know, one of the top questions we're kind of, I just kind of mentioned this um, before we started, but, you know, I get asked in the community all the time about the best property management system out there because um, there's, there's so many. And, uh, you know, just for a little bit of background for uh, the audience that's tuning in, um, Lawrence is the co-founder of Avail.co, um, which, uh, you know, I met Jason, one of one of the team members, uh, not too long ago, and kind of went through the software, and I was super impressed. <clears throat> and I thought that this community community could really benefit from from hearing about uh, Avail because uh, there's it can it can get a little overwhelming, especially if you're you're a newer uh, landlord or, or rental property owner. Um, and, and Avail is a property management software. It's super intuitive. Um, it provides all the components of you know that that a DIY landlord would need, you know, I think it's, especially for somebody who's just starting out, I think it's the perfect type of, um, interface. I remember back when I was first starting, I did tons of research. I decided on Buildium as my first property management system. <laughs> and I paid this high monthly fee and I was using probably 5% of the capabilities of it because it's like designed for huge property managers that, that manage, you know, thousands of units and it was way overkill. Um, then I found Cozy and then Cozy was bought by apartments.com and they totally destroyed the platform. And so I've been looking for an alternative um, that's kind of ideal for the smaller uh, landlord or D D DIY type landlord. And um, so I want to get into what Avail is today and all the you know uh, benefits that it can provide to a, a, a rental property owner. But I'd love to hear first a little bit about your background and kind of what drove you to create this platform. Sure, absolutely. And you know, I um, I'm happy to say I think we are the best property management <laughs> platform. Not that you're biased. <laughs> Not that I'm biased, <laughs> but it depends on your situation, is what I would say, right? Yeah. And as you mentioned, like you could see, Buildium was designed for someone who's not in your situation, right? And um. Cozy was also designed for someone in a specific kind of situation. Apartments.com is also designed for someone in a different situation. We're the best, in my opinion, for a do-it-yourself landlord, someone with nine or fewer rental units. Oftentimes, that may just be one building, two buildings, or three buildings. Most of our customers have just one unit, two units. So really small portfolio sizes um, where you know, like, there's a lot of them are first-time landlords and they need that education. Um, and I mentioned all that because that's actually why we started the business and, and leads into my background. Um, when we started this, I was at Goldman Sachs supporting our hedge funds and alternative investments, which um, I'll, I'll try to avoid making a, a pukey face at, to that. But, um, <laughs> you know, the last thing anybody wants to do is spend 100 hour weeks working and you don't move the needle at all. So back then I thought, hey, I'll buy some rental properties at least where I can try to do something. So I, I bought my first three flat. And I found that that was extremely difficult to manage that rental property and have a full-time job. And the idea of passive income is anything but passive um, when you don't have some sort of tool or professional to help you. And um, so the genesis for me was essentially, hey, I, I wanted to keep my job but I, and my rentals, but they, they don't mesh well. And something should exist that helps people like me who don't really know what we're doing, don't know how to get background checks on tenants, don't know how to collect rent. Um, online and those kinds of things, or, or which lawyer to go to for a lease agreement if you wanted to go to a lawyer. And so, you know, quit my job. Uh, my other co-founder, Ryan, did the same thing. He was almost in the exact same situation as me. So we quit our jobs and said, hey, we're going to build this set of tools to help do-it-yourself landlords like ourselves um, build up their portfolios and learn and educate themselves. And um, a lot of the things you mentioned were the things that we were just trying to solve for ourselves. I I, when I had vacancies, especially that first year, I had no idea where to go. You, you'd think you, you should go to Craigslist, uh, but you realize that there's a whole bunch of other places you want to go to. And so for us, the very first thing was, let's try to syndicate listings somewhere um, to all the various places. So I'm not going to 10 places trying to manage the leads coming in from everywhere. That was the biggest problem we're trying to solve. And, and the rest kind of just followed suit in that once we were getting ourselves leads. It's, well, how do you screen the, these renters? Um, and we had no clue. So we built kind of all of those tools, plus the education around it. And most of it was just as we were learning, we just made that learning available. Um, so that's some of my background. 
Uh, luckily enough, I've been able to grow my portfolio a little bit. So I don't know that I'd officially say I'm living off rentals entirely, but <laughs> I'm not too far away. Yeah. So, and, and a large part of it is just from the learnings I've had over the course of building this business and hearing what the, you know, we've got 600,000 landlords on our platform now. So wow. just seeing what all of them do and how they do it, it's, it's eye opening as well. How, how long has Avail been around? We, um, tricky question in a way. <laughs> uh, it, Ryan and I started working on it in 2012. So if okay. you just did the raw math, eight, nine years, but um, those first four years, you know, we're in the Midwest, we couldn't find engineering folks who wanted to come work for equity. Equity here in the Midwest is basically $0. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's really hard to raise capital. So we actually taught ourselves to code. Uh, so those first four years were really spent. Um, I, th- I wrote something like the first 600,000 lines of code in our app. And that took me a while, uh, having never wow. seen code before. Yeah. So, you know, you got this dream, you got to, <laughs> no one's going to build it for you. So you roll up your sleeves, you do it yourself, just took a long time. So that's why I say it's tricky. When did we start? I would maybe make the claim that, hey, 2016 is kind of when we really hit the ground running and had an MVP or a minimal viable product that we could go to market with. Got it. Okay. Uh, it, we're at in the Midwest area. Chicago. Oh, okay. Cool. So, yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, it's not nowhere, but it's definitely, there's no yeah. money here. No, it's, it's, yeah, definitely not uh, Silicon Valley um, mm-hmm. when it comes to coding and that sort of thing, tech jobs. Uh, yeah. I'm originally from Chicago as well. We now live in Northwest Indiana, so not too far from where you're at. Um, cool. So, so I'd love to hear more about how the platform works. If you can kind of walk, walk me through, like if I'm a, a, a DIY landlord, you know, what's, what are the main components of it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well today and, and for the past history, we focused almost on kind of the operational side of being a landlord. So, you know, you'll sign up for an account. Um, we know most landlords when they create an account with us, they they tend to have a vacancy or an upcoming vacancy. So, Really kind of the first part of that is how do you find tenants? So someone will create a listing with us, they upload their photos, they write their description, they talk about their amenities. Um, amenities for our kinds of landlords tend to be like there's a garden or a patio. It's not like it's not like a high 200 unit building which has a, an amenity floor. That's that's not typically our customers. Yeah. And um, and then they'll publish that listing with us, but you know we don't really have a huge renter audience coming to avail. Uh, instead, what we do is we take that listing and we publish it to like the very reputable sources out there where renters are looking. So uh, I'll mention Realtor.com because that's who acquired us recently. But uh, we also syndicated to Zillow, Trulia, Hot Pads, um, a whole bunch of other. I think there's 15 different websites we syndicated to. So all of a sudden, you know, you got renters on all these websites um, looking at rentals, and they'll see yours and they'll fill out the form that lead that's submitted through that form will make its way into the Avail platform. You'll also get texted and emailed whenever you get one of those. And you'll log in or you'll respond via text and you can work with that lead to schedule a showing uh, so that they can see the place. Um, you'll ask that they complete a rental application. All this is done online. So you'll, mm-hmm. you'll go in and click a button that says request application for this lead. That will send them a link. To, uh, we pull credit, uh, credit data, criminal background data and eviction data from TransUnion. That's all made available basically real time for the landlord um, and also gives a lot of control to the renter. So the renter can control, you know, um, access to that information if they wanted to revoke it at some point. So if the landlord said, hey, you're just not a good fit, at least that information is not living with that landlord into perpetuity. The renter can say, OK, uh, revoke it now. Um, and then, you know, from there, once you've you've said, hey, I like this tenant, this tenant likes the unit. Um, let's move forward. You know, we've created these state specific lease agreements for you to use. So you don't have to go to the lawyer. Uh, we've done that already. And uh, we'll give you that template. You can customize it, add your own clauses wow. if you want. Um, and then, you know, you and your renter sign it digitally, kind of like a DocuSign, um, but all homegrown so far. And uh, of course, then the renter based on the lease can start scheduling rent payments to the platform. So they'll see here's each month's rent I have to pay, security deposit, uh, pet fees, whatever fees, and they'll just click pay. And uh, they can do that through a bank account or a credit card. And uh, landlord receives the money into their bank account. And then uh, the last component of the whole process is then, you know, upholding your end of the deal as a landlord, right? So maintaining the property properly. And so renters can submit maintenance tickets through the platform and you respond to those things, coordinate with the contractor if you have one of those kinds of things. Got it. Yeah. Wow. It's so funny because like each one of those components, when I was first starting, I did manually just because I was like, well, I need to do this myself, you know? So I was like setting up showings. I would meet the, the potential landlord or potential tenants there. 
then, you know, I'd give them, uh, a sheet to, or a PDF, you know, to fill yeah. out and email me that has like a application on it. And then I'd find some service to run their background. Then I'd meet them to sign a paper lease. And then a lot of times, you know, I, I was doing voucher tenants, um, who, who didn't have bank accounts. And so I would, I, I thought my only option was to basically collect a, a money order from them on a, a monthly basis, which, you know, they were sending me in the mail and, I mean, the clunkiness and the amount of time that that took. Yeah. Uh, it's it no just... wonder you can't grow a portfolio yeah. like that. And, yeah. um, and, and, and to do it on the side, most, most landlords we work with are part-time landlords, you know, like it's not their main bread and right. butter yet and, yeah. um, and might never be. And it's just, it's cumbersome. It's not supposed to be like that. And obviously terrible experience for the renter too. You know, you and I mm-hmm. did the, almost the same thing. I made my, the, my first year doing it, I made a rental application in Excel. You know, I merged, you know, merging cells together, painting the top row blue or whatever yeah. <laughs> it is. And then I print it and I'll be like, hey, can you please complete this? And it yeah. seems so silly. Um, but that's actually today how most do-it-yourself landlords still do it. They'll mm-hmm. they'll download a PDF, print it out. Um, it's not at all tailored to how they want to run their business or has the right kind of questions on it. It's just something they found on the internet and they have no clue if it's good or bad. Yeah. And print it, and use it. Well, and I think a lot of them too think that this is how, uh, you know, my tenants are just used to this system and this is how that we do things. This, you know, a digital platform isn't going to work for me. But what I've noticed once I got a better system is that it's all about training the the tenant. You know, it's, it, if you just right from jump street, say, this is the way I do things. Like it's, you're going to get a link in your email and fill it out. And they say, well, I don't have an email. Well, go to Gmail and create an email because this is how it's going to be done. Um, and they say, well, I don't have a bank account, so I got to send you a money order. Nope. That, you know, you, then you got to get a prepaid debit card or a credit card or something where you can pay digitally, you know, because this is you the way start, it's done. You can start in the listing too, right? At the bottom of the listing, just say, hey, and you know, uh, credit report, background check required on all applicants, you know, and it's run through a bail. And then they see it and they know you've communicated it and you keep communicating it. So they, they get a sense for it. And renters who just have no interest in that, maybe one, they're not the right renter for some landlords and, and they'll kind of self-select out. So yeah, I, I like the idea of over-communicating and setting up expectations, setting up a process. Th- those processes also help us treat all renters equally too. So I think it's it's just better all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a good point. This, the, it's another selection tool by putting these processes in place that just kind of uh, gets you a higher caliber of, uh, of tenant that's not going to be have a bunch of problems right from the start. It's like, if they can't follow instructions, then maybe you don't want to start that relationship with them. Um, I'm curious. So, uh, and I apologize about running, you know, parallels to Cozy, but that's kind of the platform that I was using and am used to. And, um, and it's, it's kind of raw for me what they did. So, when Cozy was bought by apartments.com, they basically took this you know, really intuitive, great piece of software, in my opinion, and kind of flushed it down the toilet, um, which I don't get the tech industry, like how, how it makes sense to pay millions of dollars to buy something that works and then make it so terrible for your customers and that they can't even use it anymore. Um, I guess there's some logic somewhere in there, but, um, so how, how do you, you, you mentioned that you guys were bought by realtor.com. How, how are you preventing that same thing from happening? Because it sounds like you're still running the company and w- what's the difference? How do people know that they're not going to sign up, get a bunch of properties going, and then all of a sudden it turns into another cozy situation? Yeah, completely understandable. You know, cozy, I thought was a pretty good product as well. So um, I like seeing competition out there, giving people options. I, th- I think cozy was maybe developed slightly different than ours and it's maybe satisfied slightly different needs. So you you would have, it's good to have alternatives, I think. And it's good to set a bar and hold everyone accountable. We were better because Cozy existed. Cozy was better because we existed. Uh, I can't speak to the rationale for why someone would pay millions of dollars for a very functional business and then just throw it away. Um, I can tell you, it feels like there are very clever people over at uh, a co-star and apartment list. So they must have a reason that fits into some broader strategy that we're just not privy to. There's something happening there. Wheels are turning. Um, But it is different than our situation. We were acquired by realtor.com this past December. Um, And I think the big difference there is um, we're continuing to run kind of the rentals org at realtor. 
Um, and Avail is maybe one component of that, but it's a big component and it fits into a broader strategy for realtors. So we knew that when we sold that, hey, this is going to be a, a component of the long-term rental strategy. And I don't think we would have sold if they were telling us, hey, the strategy is we're going to pull the pieces apart and digest them in certain ways. And um, so they made us promises. We made them promises. And so far, um, both sides have been upheld really well. I'm actually very impressed with the leadership at Realtor.com. Um, I think it's a really smart group who've done very successfully at other businesses and even at Realtor. And I think Realtor is just growing tremendously and leaps and bounds. So I'm very excited by what we will accomplish. And um, we're even doubling down on rentals. So um, I don't know if this is super confidential or not, but I'll let you guys know. We're, we've, we've doubled our team size this uh, year alone uh, for nice. rentals. And so we're, we're putting more resources to it. We, we want to make our platform better. We want to make an environment where, you know, DIY landlords are getting access to the tools that they've always deserved. We're really also focusing on the renter experience more than we have in the past. Um, you know, there's, there's some level of uh, in the renters somewhat get ignored uh, sometimes in the property management software game, but I think it's important that they don't. Um, you know, happy renters going to make a happy landlord. And so we're really putting a lot of effort in that space as well. That's great to hear. Yeah. I, I uh, just personally have started using realtor.com a lot more than any of the other, you know, like the um, Zillow's and, and Redfin's and um, the other platforms. I think realtor.com is just more intuitive and it makes more sense. It sounds like they're actually heading in the right direction a lot more than like Zillow who announced yesterday, they're laying off 25% of their workforce and they're, they have a challenge with evaluating the, the value of properties. I'm like, isn't that what you guys do with this estimate? But, um, but that's, that, that's good to hear uh, that this is going to be around for the, the long haul. Um, I, I tell people a lot that, that the key to eliminating 95% of the issues that come up with rental properties. Um, Cause I think there's a, a stereotype, like when people start thinking about getting into rentals, it's like, Oh, you're going to have to unclog toilets at midnight or whatever they say. Um, but you can eliminate 95% of that stuff by selecting the right tenant right up front. And I think this is a part of the process that is not very intuitive to people when they first start and not totally understood how, how do you select the right tenant? Because all tenants are going to tell you that they are the best tenant in the whole world. And they've always paid on time, even though they might have six evictions on their record. So what, what, how, how do you guys help people screen a tenant um, and ensure that they're going to have the, the best tenant possible? Yeah. I, well, I think as you become more experienced as a landlord, things get a little easier in this realm. Uh, when you first start out, I think landlords come in with maybe what I'll call a scarcity mentality. So you have an upcoming vacancy or a vacancy and you just get scared. You're like, hey, I'm not going to be able to fill this. There aren't, I'm not going to find renters. And when you have that kind of fear or, or you're scared, you start to make compromises um, as to who you'll take and, and what, you know, you may even lower rent. You may, it just, it becomes a scary environment for you. And so I think the first thing is just make sure that you don't go in with a, a scarcity mentality. Um, from there, then it becomes, you're absolutely right, by the way. Proper tenant screening is fundamental. 95% of problems go away with if you found the tenants that are right for your unit. Um, so you, you want to set up a process to do this. So forget the tools for a second. Process is everything, and then you fill in with a tool. So you want to screen all renters kind of the same way. Um, so you want to ask them about where they've lived in the past, um, get access to those prior landlords, talk to those prior landlords. Um, have them fill out an application that details who's going to be living with them, what pets, maybe what car, um, in case they have, if they're doing parking. Um, you want to get some sort of credit history uh, to how they treat, you know, other creditors is a good indicator of how they're going to treat you. You probably want to get access to eviction data. If they've had problems with landlords in the past, they're probably going to have problems with you. Um, I'm not as... Uh, worried necessarily about criminal data. There's there's a backstory for a lot of people. I would maybe say like violent criminal history may be more scary, um, but the further back in time it is, maybe the less critical. So if you, you set up this process, set up your criteria, and then make sure you stick to it. And then you can throw on a tool on top of it, whether that's a veil or it's cozy or somebody else. And um, that tool is supposed to help guide you and make sure you're, you're getting access to the right stuff. So for us, 
when a landlord's ready to screen a tenant, they'll basically click a button um, that says, hey, request a rental application. That will show them the application the tenant's going to see, allow them to add um, custom application questions in addition to the ones we normally ask, which are rental history, employment history, income verification, those kinds of things. And um, they'll add their own questions. That will then go electronically to the renter. They'll fill it out. Landlord will get it back. Um, our service actually will also contact prior landlords on your behalf. So we'll email, sometimes call them and try to get a reference check for you. So you don't have to call. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll call them ambiverts. Sometimes I feel extroverted. Sometimes I feel introverted. The times where I feel introverted, I don't want to talk to other landlords yeah. to find out if it was a good tenant. So if there's a, if there's someone that's going to do it for me, that's great. And, um, so you take on all that data that the system's going to show you, you see it right on the screen and then you make a decision. Did it hit all my boxes? And um, if so, then great. So I think it just first comes down to send that criteria. There's a whole bunch that, that maybe I didn't mention that's important. So like a um, income to rent, you know, make sure they can afford it, make sure they don't have too much debt where you know, they're paying off all the debt and then can't afford the rent. Um, there's little telltale signs to look for. Um, I like to look to like, if they have a car, I'll look in the windows. If it's really dirty and gross, maybe my apartment's going to be dirty and gross. That's not always a great red flag, but it's something. Um, and then just how are they as people? Did they show up on time? Right. It, it, if they were late, did they at least give me a little bit of a notice? Did they text me saying, Hey, I'm gonna, for the showings I'm talking about. Um, so how, how they treat me on showings days, probably how they're going to treat me in the future and vice versa, right? I want to treat them with respect so they know how I'm going to be with the landlord and, and those kinds of things. So um, if I had to summarize it, figure out your criteria, figure out your process, then add the tool in later. Um, so that's that's how we help. And a lot of our yeah. stuff is, is educational around those things besides the physical tool itself. Yeah. No, and I think it's a great point that you made that it's a lot of data points. I mean, you mentioned a lot of different things there that, you know, I think people are looking for the one thing that they're going to check, but it's like, you know, there, there's indicators. So I think if you can check all these different indicators from just how they keep their, their car, or their stuff right now to, um, you know, their, their credit history and their previous landlords, you know, these are indicators of how they've been in the past, which is most likely, uh, going to carry over into the future. And then the other indicators of, can they afford it? Is their credit, you know, do they have a ton of debts? Is their income, you know, there, uh, if, if those two things line up and all the indicators point to, you know, that, that they will, you know, be a, a dependable person and they can afford it, then, you know, it seems like they're nine times out of 10, it's, it's a, a good, uh, uh, tenant. You know, the, the other thing that, um, has helped me in the past when I think back to uh, things that were a challenge in the beginning. And then once I got a better system became much easier was having automated payments um, and, or, or at a minimum reminders that go out on an automated basis to the tenants. And then also the late fee collection. I, I was a huge sucker in the beginning with, you know, Oh, you're only, you know, 10 days late. As long as you can pay it now, I won't charge you the late fee. Well, they're never going to have incentive to pay on time if you don't charge that late fee. And so I eventually had systems set up to where it automatically, and I tell them right up front, it's automatically taken out. I don't have control over the late fee. So if you pay after the fifth day, even if it's because of a, a funeral, I can't change that. So, you know, you got to, you got to figure out how to get it paid on time and here's some automated a way to pay automatically. So you, do you guys have that as part of the system as well? Yeah, we, we do. And I think a lot of it plays into the psychology of just being a human and being a good person. Um, you know, we're, we're all inherently good. And when, when a tenant is late and I have to manually do like talk to them about it, we, we, we tend to give more. Right. And um, and I'm not suggesting you want a tool that's going to make you <laughs> inhuman, but, um, <laughs> but, but we all suffer from this a little bit. And uh I think it is important to have a tool that's going to help you stay on track, stay focused. And um, if you're, t if you're, the tool can help you do you know, automatic late fees, then great. That's, that's a good thing. And that that's where Avail or a system like ours can step in and, and take on that confrontation or be the, the bad guy for you so that you're not having to be the bad guy. Um, our system does it automatically. So, you know, when you're setting up the lease and you're setting up the payment schedule, um, you just say, hey, when do I want to consider rent to be late and assess the, the late fee? 
Um, and we give a little bit of flexibility for you to decide that because um, some jurisdictions say it's late on the first. Some say you got to give a five day grace period. Some landlords like to give six or seven day grace period. So you'll go in and say, hey, it's I want to consider it late five days in. And then that's when the automatic late fee will come in. Um, and then what type of late fee? So is it going to be what dollar amount or is it a percentage or those kinds of things? Um, it can, all kind of customizable in a way. Um, of course, you 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 do want to be fair. Like so, sometimes a renter will have a problem, and then uh, you're fine. As a human being, you want to step in and maybe maybe work with them. Um, particularly during the pandemic, right? I think we've all kind of had to say, "Hey, the, this is a time for all of us to get together." Um, but in a standard environment, you know, we 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 do have to hold up a, a very strict process because um, we, when you allow rent to be late, it puts us out. My mortgage is now going to be late. And I think we just have to make sure that we're, we're communicating that, hey, we're f- impacted as well. And that's where a late fee helps, you know, show that I'm impacted as the landlord when you're late. Got it. Yeah, no, that, that all makes sense. Um, and then you, you also mentioned that that, uh, that uh, tenants can put in a, a maintenance request on the platform as well. Uh, and I know, again, when I was first getting started, it was, I had to give my number and, and email and I tried to I had an addendum in the lease that said basically, you know, 95% of things you can email me about and I'll get to it, you know, within a day or so. Um, 5% of things like, you know, the water is pouring out of your bathtub onto the floor and there's a major catastrophe happening. Call me or, or text me or whatever, get a hold of me right away. Um, but that, you know, is, it, it depends on them to remember that in the moment. Um, and so there wasn't a tight system around maintenance requests and then following up on those requests. Um, so how does that work? Is there an app that, it, that a tenant can download and put it in on the app or how, how do they uh, report the maintenance stuff? Yeah, for sure. Great question. Um, and maintenance is important, right? I, uh, as an aside, um, you know, tenants want a comfortable place to live knowing that the landlord's going to take care of it. If you do a great job, then they'll renew. It's so much easier when they, when you have that system. And then of course, if you take care of the place, they're more likely to take care of it too. Um, I, I forget what it was called, but there's a theory out there, maybe called the broken window theory. So if you're in a neighborhood with one broken window, you're going to get more broken windows. Mm. So if you neglect these things, yeah. your tenants are going to be neglectful. And so it's just in your best interest, their best interest. Um, now, our platform is a mobile web app. So there isn't a downloadable um, app. But if you go to Safari or Chrome on your phone, it's going to feel like a, a mobile app. Got it. And um, so they, they can do all of the stuff on there. They can pay their rent. They can do their application, sign the lease. And of course, maintenance requests, they can submit through the web app as well. And um, you're, for, for them, the benefit is obviously tracking, you know, holding a landlord accountable, seeing what's happening, knowing that the landlord's receiving something. For the landlord, the benefit is also tracking, right? I, I want to be able to, at the end of the year, say, this is all the maintenance I did. So whether that's for expense and tax reporting or if it's to know, hey, this was a troublesome tenant or not, um, you kind of want visibility into it. Um, so I think it's beneficial for both. Um, and as you mentioned, sometimes there's not a tight loop for tenants to know, go to the website. So that comes down to training as well. So I know with my renters and we encourage this with our landlords who use the platform, whenever you get a text message or an email with a maintenance issue, I always respond back with, hey, um, awesome, I'll take care of this. Can you please first submit it through the app? And that way it's in there. Um, and then I run off that app. That's my checklist. Because otherwise I do forget, um, especially in texts. Um, I'll read the text and say I'm going to do something. And then the day goes by and I've just forgotten and the text is now buried 30 texts below. So for me, it is important getting it into a system that's going to constantly remind me and have me do something. So it's just training to get them to use it. Yeah. Got it. That makes sense. Yep. Um, and what's the pricing model around this? If somebody is hearing this and they have been doing things the old fashioned way and they want to switch over. Yeah, absolutely. So it starts off free. Um, in fact, you can use basically all of our services for free, um, for an unlimited number of units. Um, I think we're best designed for someone with less than 10 units. We've got a lot of landlords who've got 200, 300 units. Uh, I'm not saying we're poorly designed for them, um, but really well designed for someone with less than 10 units. And um, there are some premium features we offer. So um, for instance, if you want right now, it's going to take three business days for the rent to be deposited to your account. So if you want it faster, 
uh, then you'd need to upgrade your account. And we do it on a subscription model. Um, so it'd be $5 per unit per month. There's some customizations that uh, are out of the box that you can do that are included for free. And then there are some customizations that are you have to pay for or at least be on the subscription plan for. So for instance, one of those might be on the lease agreement. Uh, we'll give you our boilerplate lease for the city. And if you want to customize it, then you'd need to be on a subscription plan. So for most landlords who are right out of the gate, um, there's really no need to customize anything. It's already city specific. But for those who've been in, in the business for like 15 years and they've got their 18 clauses they want to add to it, they, they do find value in subscribing. And that subscription is $5 per unit per month. So it's also incredibly cheap um, and includes a whole bunch of other things besides just the two things I mentioned. Man, that's amazing. Uh, it, I mean, just the leases alone, getting a, a attorney reviewed lease specific for your state or city, that's that. I mean, that's a huge value right there. How, how do you guys get paid? Yeah. So the subscription model is one way, so the five dollars per unit. But we also have some transactional fees. So um, the renters typically will pay for the background checks with us. Okay. So when when as a landlord, when you request the rental application, you'll also say, "Hey, I want credit report, background, uh, criminal background, and eviction." Each of those reports is a revenue generator for us. So we'll charge. 55 if you want all three or just $30 if you want just a credit report. And the renter oftentimes will be the one who pays for that. I think it's like 95% of transactions are paid by the renter. Um, and then we have a margin on that. So we pay TransUnion a little bit and we keep a lot. So that keeps uh, the lights on, keeps us growing and everything. Man, that's great. I, if I still had long-term rentals, I, I definitely would uh, be a user and, and full disclosure, I'm not an affiliate yet, um, but I, I'm working with Jason uh, to, to become an affiliate because I, I really like this platform uh, and I think it's a, a, it's got a lot of great features to it. Um, and I know Jason's waiting on a few things from me to, to make that happen. So I apologize, Jason, but I'll get that over. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it, the, the one thing I was curious about as well, too, is, is the accounting piece, which I think is another thing that, that newer landlords struggle with, particularly. Is there uh, a cost accounting built in to where you can, like, segregate by property um, or, or how, do, how does that work? Yeah, to be frank, no, we don't, actually, we don't have that. I think it's a huge miss today, um, but we're working on it. We've got, I think, two product teams who are researching it, starting to think about how we build it. And hopefully here in the next, I don't know, 6, 12 months, don't quote me on that. I don't want to Elon Musk time present here, but um, <laughs> at some point in the, in the future, we'll have kind of that expense tracking and accounting feature. We're thinking of it in a way where can it automatically drop into a Schedule E or a Schedule C? Um, you know, tax time, can it help give you the kind of reporting you need to see which building or units are profitable, which aren't. Um, but accounting is complex. So it takes, it takes a little bit to build. And then uh, you want to do it in a way or we want to do it in a way where you're not having people manually enter all of this expense data. So um, we're trying to figure out how, how do you use something like a plaid um, to, and if you're not familiar with them, it's a um, but forget, how do you use credit card data? Maybe a landlord has a specific credit card they use for all the rentals. Can we hook into that credit card data so it automatically populates everything? Last thing we want to have people do is manually enter everything. So um, there's, there's a step stone to get there, but it's, it's coming. Got it. Yeah. You, I'm sure you had some developers freak out when they just heard, you know, six, six months. They, they're probably like getting back on their computer right now to try to bust out some more code. Uh, it seems like everyone sure. always like, you know, the, it's always the owner saying, yeah, this is going to be, uh, be released in a certain time period. And then the, the developers in the background are going, no, no, wait, <laughs> no, that's yeah, awesome. It took that, me, that it's coming. It took me four, four years to get the most basic stuff out. So <laughs> I feel like any time from they do makes me look silly. Yeah, no, no, it's, and it's, it, it's, uh, great to hear that it's coming, but it, it's also a, a good point that, um, there's, there's no platform out there that that's going to have every single feature perfect, um, on it. You know, I was looking for that because I, I transitioned from long-term rentals into short-term or vacation rentals. And, um, I spent a ton of time looking for the right property management system for vacation rentals. And I wanted all of it, you know, everything to be perfect on one platform and it's, it's impossible to find. So I think if it covers 90% and then obviously as 
things progress, you add the things that customers uh, are looking for. I think that makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like that's what this does. So I, I really appreciate you um, sharing all of this uh, with, with the audience here. Um, if somebody wants to, uh, to find out more information, is it ju- just go to avail.co? Yeah, that's our website. Um, that's where they can go learn more. They can sign up. It's free. Check it out. Give us feedback. Um, I'm also happy if people want to reach out to me directly, um, they can email me. I, I guess I could. Uh, I, I think it's still active. They can email me at lawrence at avail.co, L-A-U-R-E-N-C-E um, at avail.co. And I think that forwards now to my realtor email. So um, <laughs> that'll come to me. Um, I'm checking that. Love to hear people's feedback. Love to respond. So. That's awesome. That's great. Um, well, sounds good. I, I really appreciate the time today and I, I know people are going to get a lot out of this, uh, this interview. So thanks for, uh, for sharing. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely.